Hi, I'm Jeremy Morgan. In this video, we're going to create an ASP.NET MVC application in .NET Core and deploy it to Azure. In the past, we built ASP.NET applications on a Windows machine and deployed it to a Windows server. Usually, you had to provision and configure this environment yourself. With .NET Core and Azure, you can develop applications on the big three operating systems, Windows, OS X, or Linux. And you can deploy these applications to Azure without having to worry about things like what operating system the application resides on or how it's configured. So let's get started building a quick ASP.NET MVC application and push it to an app service on Azure. I'm here on my Debian development machine and I have the .NET SDK and runtime installed. Since I'm using Visual Studio Code and the command line for this, the operating system I'm working on doesn't really matter. The steps are the same on a Windows or a Mac. This is neat because you get to work in the environment you're comfortable with. For instance, in Linux, we have some cool built-in stuff like grep, sed, and awk that I can use as I'm developing. I'm not going to create anything super complicated here, just a hello world type ASP.NET page to look at. Using the .NET CLI, we can use scaffolding similar to something like Yaoman and JavaScript that just creates some basic files to build a particular type of application. So we'll type in the following command. This calls the .NET command of the CLI and tells it to create a new MVC application. The dash O parameter is for output, and this tells it to output to a folder named hello MVC. And it was created successfully. Now I open the folder in Visual Studio Code, and you can see the .NET CLI created some files and folders here for an ASP.NET MVC page. Let's open up one of the views. Notice in Visual Studio Code that we have a terminal window here. This is a pretty handy view that lets you run things from the terminal within the application. Let's use this terminal to access the CLI and do a test run of our application on our local host. We do this by typing in .NET run. It starts up the Kestrel server and gives a message showing that it's listening on the local host at port 5001 and 5000. Now, if we point our browser towards localhost port 5001, we can see the ASP.NET page. And as you can see, the certificate is not functioning by default, so it's an insecure page. That's okay though, we just wanna verify that our ASP.NET page is working on our local machine. And we'll press Control-C to exit. Now let's pretend we built this awesome ASP.NET Core application and we wanna publish it to Azure. This is pretty easy stuff. As I mentioned, in the past, if we built an ASP.NET MVC application, we might have to provision a new server for it. We'd have to create a new folder on IAS and create application pools and all kinds of stuff. We don't have to do that anymore. So now I have my Azure portal loaded up. Now one key difference in the operating system we're using still exists here. If we were in Windows using Visual Studio, I could publish my application by clicking a few buttons and logging in. But since we developed this in Linux, we'll have to do it a little differently. Now in the Azure portal, I'm going to create a new app service. So I'll click on App Services, then Add. As you can see here, we have a lot of choices from the gallery. This is another form of scaffolding on the Azure side of things. You can create a web app, web app with SQL, or even something like WordPress or Sitecore. We just wanna create a basic web app. By choosing web app, it's super flexible as we have a variety of options ranging from .NET Core to PHP, Node.js, and more. And now we see some configuration options for a web app. First is the app name, which we'll name Hello MVC Demo. Under subscription, I'll select Visual Studio Professional. This allows you to select where the Azure credits are coming from. Under resource group, you can either create a new one or use an existing one. This group just says where you'll be storing the application. Think of a hard drive. You can divide it up between projects or companies and this affects how you'll be charged for the space that stores your application. I can choose my OS, Windows, or Linux. This part doesn't matter as much because they'll function the same way. Next, we have an option to publish code or a Docker image. If we put this application into a container, we could easily port it here. But we didn't, so we'll select code. Under App Service Plan Location, we can choose a service plan that contains information like location of the service, features, or compute resources that we want to use. And we can turn Application Insights on or off here. Let's click Create. And this cursor indicates that it's processing right now. So our validation was successful, which means none of our settings caused a problem with the creation process. Now we'll go back to our dashboard and select app services again. 
In this screen, we can see information about our Hello MVC demo application. There's even some FTP deployment information here and a URL to our application. Let's click the URL. Here we can see the basic welcome screen for an application. We're going to replace this page with our MVC application. Let's click on Deployment Options and then Configure Required Settings. Here we have some additional options for deployment. There's a few options here like a local repository, GitHub, or Bitbucket. For this application, let's use a local Git repository and click OK. As a note, I already have deployment credentials set up. If this is your first time doing this, you'll need to click here and set a username and password for a deployment user. Now let's go back to our main application page. Now as you can see, we have some new information over here for Git. We have a deployment username and a Git clone URL. So let's clone this repository for our machine. Now we're back in our projects folder, so let's clone this to a folder called Hello Repo. And now it's asking me for my password for my deployment credentials. And then it shows a message that we cloned an empty repository. Now we'll go back into Visual Studio Code. We want to build our application. So to do that, we'll type in the following. And now it built successfully, so we can publish it. Here we are typing .NET Publish, then dash O, and Hello Repo. You might remember this dash O means direct output too. We want to direct our output to the Hello Repo directory. And it published without an error, so let's go into that repo. And now we'll add the files to the git repo. And now we'll commit it. And this is our first commit, and it's ready to push to Azure. You can just type in git push here, or explicitly add the remote repo. Now after we type in git push, it asks us for our Azure authentication information. And it looks like it pushed successfully. So let's check out the site. And there's our ASP.NET MVC website ready to go. This website is an app service, which means it can be scaled out as it grows and replicated easily. Now this is pretty easy to do, and it's far less effort than provisioning an entire server for this application. It's roughly the same amount of work as configuring an application in IIS, but now you have all the benefits of an Azure service. You can create deployment and test environments also with the click of a button. This is just one option for developing .NET Core applications in Azure.